Hey, what's up, everybody? David Wood here for David Wood FX to bring you another. Huh. That's weird. I wonder what that is. Whoa! Whoa, I did not see that coming. That was pretty insane. Huh, cool. New computer. Well, let's go ahead and give it a test run, shall we, with the tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to be creating a fiery text effect. And this is actually converted from a Photoshop tutorial on 10steps.sg. And in the tutorial, it uses some layer styles and stuff to create the final result. And somebody messaged me and said, hey, can you make this in GIMP? I said, yeah, I can take a look at it. And of course I did, because it really wasn't that hard. So we're going to get started with the tutorial. And uh, it won't be as complicated as this because I put extra work into the final image here. But it will give you the base effect. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to create a new uh, default sized image at 640 by 400. And the background is going to be black. And the first thing we're going to do is select our text tool. And I'm using the font Trajan Pro. If you don't have that, that's not a problem. And I'm just going to type out a letter. So I'll type out an F for fire. And we want to change the color of this to CD7E2E. And then we will center our text. And then go to layer, layer to image size. OK, there is our base. Now what we'll do is we're going to create a new blank layer right below it. And then we'll right click on the text layer and choose alpha to selection. Once there is that selection, we're going to go to select, grow, and we'll grow the selection by two pixels. Now depending on the size image you're working with, this will change, but two works really well for this. And we're going to fill this in with a solid red at double F quadruple zero. And just fill that in and then select none. Okay, then we'll name this layer by hitting the space bar key on that layer and we'll type this and we'll name this one glow and the main one we'll just leave that at F and the next thing we need to do is we are going to create another new layer make it transparent above the main letter and again choose alpha selection on that layer go back to the new one go to select invert and then select grow and in here we are going to grow the selection by two pixels and as you can see it made the selection on the inside of the text shrink and then go back to select invert again and then we're going to fill this in with a brown color this is going to be 872 D0F hit OK and fill that in and then select none and then what we'll do is go to filter blur Gaussian blur and we're just going to give this a blur of 5 and for the glow layer, we'll give that one a Gaussian blur right now. I'll give this a blur of 10. And then that new layer, we'll name this one multiply. And because that's the blend mode, we're going to set this one on. And now there's just one more thing to do. Alpha to select the main layer. And we'll make another transparent layer above the multiply layer. And we'll fill this in with the gold color. This color is E5C23B. Fill that in. And then we'll go to Select, Invert, Select Grow. We'll grow this by two pixels. Invert the selection back. Fill it with black. And then select None. So that's what that layer will look like. And we're going to name this one Hot Spot. I set the blend mode of this layer to dodge. And there we have the base effect of that glowing letter. What we'll do is we'll turn off the background layer and select the background layer and we're going to go to layer, new from visible and then we'll turn off the other layers. And this just merged all the layers into one single layer which we can now edit. So now what we'll do is we'll take the rectangular select tool and we'll draw a selection around our text like this and then we'll go to filter distorts eye warp and in the eye warp settings what we want to do is just deform the edge and give it a ripple effect as you can see in the example here 
this is what it looked like. Uh, one last thing, you could erase part of the text beforehand with a large soft brush. Uh, it's just kind of like that. That's what I did in the original example. Um, it's completely optional depending on what look you're going for if you want the letters to look as if they're burning off or not. So uh, I think I'll leave that just like that. Anyway, go back to iWarp and in here we're going to choose the move tool and we're just going to make little adjustments to the text and just give it a warping effect. And you can change the radius if you need to just to give it uh, more character. And once you're satisfied with that, hit OK. And our letter will look distorted like that. And then select None. And let's see how it's comparing to the original example. I think that's looking pretty good. The main effect is out of the way. Now we'll go about adding the fire to this effect. Now uh, in this tutorial it goes to a single stock image on DeviantArt. It's simply called Fire by Shades of Grey. And this is what the image looks like. And we're just going to copy this image. And uh, also you can go through the DeviantArt resource uh, page in the stock images and there's all kinds of fire images you can use. Just make sure that you abide by the rules set by the deviant that uploaded it. But uh, there's lots of great images you can choose from in here. But we're just going to use this one stock image for this effect. So we'll bring that into GIMP. So I'm just going to paste it from the clipboard. And in the new image, uh, we could just paste it directly into the effect as a new layer. And then scale it down and uh, play with the blend modes and such. But it's a little overly bright for this effect. So we're going to first darken it up and then we'll continue playing with it. So we loaded it as a new image and we'll go to colors, desaturate, we'll choose luminosity and then we'll go to colors, levels and in here we're just going to grab the gray slider and push it to the white and that will just significantly darken up the image and then we'll grab the white and just push that towards the gray a little bit and this uh, will just bring in some of those highlights again and hit OK and so uh, now there's a lot more uh, transparent areas, these blacker areas through here, but the only problem is the image is in black and white. So we have to color correct it. So we'll go to colors, color balance. And in here I have a preset called fire. And basically what it is is in the midtones, the uh, settings are 100 for the first slider, negative 40 for the second slider, and negative 100 for the third. And then for the shadows, we've got 50 for the first, 30 for the second, and negative 50 for the last one. And I don't have anything touched in the highlights. You can uh, try and add just a little bit of that. It generally uh, helps the image a little bit, but sometimes it will mess up the black color in it. So use that sparingly if you do play with it. This, this should look pretty good. So I added 20 to that, to the uh, first slider in highlights, and hit OK. And now we need to get it into our other image. And because I'm using a screen recorder, I can't simply drag and drop the photo into it. Normally you would be able to do that, but because I can't, I have to select it all, and copy it, and then paste it as a new layer. And we'll take the layer and we'll scale it down. And we'll set the blend mode on screen. And it's still kind of bright but it's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to duplicate this layer and hide the bottom one. And I'm going to play with this first one here a little bit more. So I'll scale it down some more. And then we just want to place it around our fire effect. And then we'll use a black soft edged brush. And right now we'll turn up the size the scale to uh, around 8 works good for this. And we'll just get rid of all these edges on the outside of this effect. So simply erasing the edges around the effect. And then we can scale it down and go into more detail about what we're erasing. And we just want to get rid of 
majority of the effects. We just want something uh, kind of like an outline around the main text effect. Looks pretty good. And it's still a little bright, so again, going back into levels and just darkening that up until you're satisfied with it. And uh, playing with the colors a little bit. And then what you do is you simply use the other copy of it. And again, duplicating this and changing this copy of it, scaling it down. Uh, you can try rotating it and just uh, placing it back over the fire. And then erasing this one as well using the same thing, a soft edged large brush. And just erasing around it. And uh, that is all there is to that effect. Again, you want to make sure that the colors all blend properly. Try darkening it up and uh, making it look as if it's part of the text. And you could put the text effect on top of these as well if you want. And that can help sell it the effect more is also, although you don't want just the text join through, so you want some fire on top of it. But that is all there is to that effect. And then you just copy the same technique and do it for the other letters, and playing around with the fire as well. Uh, one last thing I'll do for this image as I'll go to new, uh, layer new from visible, and grab the Gaussian blur filter and blur that out to like 30 or 40 and then just set the blend mode on screen just to give it an overall glow and help to bring the effect out and that will just give it a little more life and then just adding a tiny amount of color correction to that and that is all there is to that effect so I hope you guys found this tutorial exciting or interesting and you can use it in your projects and um, that's it for this tutorial. I'm David Wood, davidwoodfx.blogspot.com, and I will see you guys next time.